Stornham, on the island of Lewis. A town of 5,000 people living on the western edge of Europe. It's a community that values a good education very highly indeed. And compared to any other area in the country, the results are exceptional. And this is where education happens in Stornoway, the Nicholson Institute. And true to form, I've been asked to the rector's office on the first day of school. <laughs> Pioneering the teaching of Gaelic at the Institute is a man from Lanarkshire, Rector Eddie Young. I have heard that uh, the Western Isles produce more graduates per head of population than any other part of Britain. Well, the population of the Western Isles is about 30,000. And uh, I don't have the any precise statistics because we don't have the feedback. But it always has seemed to me that we produce in the nicest possible sense a disproportionate number of graduates <laughs> <laughs> to the numbers of people in the Western Isles. It's a long tradition and I'm quite sure that it is a fact. We send it all somewhere between 50 and 60 directly to universities but we must be sending 40 to 50 more to degree granting institutions to do degrees, so that's over 100 pupils a year doing degrees. But of course, as I keep saying, these are not our only pupils. We have to make sure we look after the whole range of ability, and that is one of the big problems in education, in Scottish education in particular, and we still keep trying to do better in that. Now we are in an area of the Gaelic, Eddie, and there was a time, I think, when Gaelic was taught at home and English was a foreign language. What's the situation now? Children tend to f consider that English is the more fashionable language. But things are changing. Since the Western Isles Islands Council was set up in 1975, I've seen Gaelic being spoken much more naturally, much more confidently, much more easily. So it's not dead, and it could be saved. Are you still considered an outsider after 20 years? Well, it's very interesting. When I first came here, I was given a very warm welcome because that is the natural courtesy and hospitality of the islander. After a few years, I think people realized that I really did like Lewis because I, I, or the Western Isles because I don't go away during the summer if I can avoid it. It's too, too pleasant. And then you have gradually changing levels of acceptance. So now after nearly 21 years, of course I'm not a Hebridean, I am an outsider, but I'm not an outsider in the bad sense. <laughs> Perhaps I am more to be pitied now than condemned. <laughs> With people like Eddie looking after education on the island, its reputation certainly won't decline. The fishing industry of Stornoway has, on the other hand, suffered quite a severe downturn. But things are now starting to recover, at least for the Creole fishermen. Our newfound appetites for things like crab sticks and lobster has put Angus MacDonald into business. Out on his boat, I soon realised Angus's modesty wasn't the only thing that I hadn't bargained for. Angus MacDonald, most people call you Mop. Why? <laughs> well, when, when I was younger, I used to have longer hair. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to it? Oh, I did. Silly, silly question. Uh, really. <laughs> You're only one of two fishermen that I know of that bought new boats recently. Is this a good sign? Are things in the up and up? Well, I hope so. Uh, there's a lot, there, there is a few boats coming into the island now, fishing for crabs. And there's boats from as far away as Guernsey, in Channel Islands, fishing here. And, and in the summer, we, we, we get a ton of crab a day, we're quite happy. In the winter, slightly less, you get, you'll get less crab. But the price difference makes up for it. How heavily involved are you in the competitive side of fishing? I try and get away once a year to most of the European Championships. Uh, and other times I go away to um, competitions in Ireland or the Irish Championships. And how do you do? Uh, well, it's just <laughs> up and down varies, <laughs> depends on the venue. Go on now, no modesty. You, <laughs> you're a medal winner, aren't you? We won the gold medal in scraps the one year, yes. You're far too modest, Mo. <laughs> you're off to European Championships in Plymouth shortly. This is your second attempt 
going to this one this year because you had withdrawn, hadn't you? That's right, yes, we had withdrawn. Why? Well, it was a um, South African team uh, supposed to be fishing this championships. Although they've fished in other championships before and fished in Plymouth before, but uh, they felt that the Scottish team had, had to withdraw, withdrew, withdraw this year. But now that the South African team has withdrawn, we're going to start, we're going to go in to fish again. You're back in? Back in, yeah. You know that cup of coffee we had earlier? Yeah. I think you'd have been as well thrown it over the side, it, it would have saved me the trouble. <laughs> well, with Mop's help, I did get back in one piece. I'd quite forgotten what a landlubber I was. Mind you, in my defence, the smell of crab bait and diesel is the quickest way to turn thoughts of conversation to mere survival. The engine is station! Hamilton! But I recovered sufficiently once in dry land to visit a local entrepreneur, Donny McKeever. Known in Stornoway and throughout the island by his initials D H M. Hello, Donny. Good, good, good afternoon, this is good afternoon. <laughs> How are you? Well, I'm fine. How are you? That's a fine day. I'm fine, oh, thank you. Oh, yes, we ordered this day for uh, this Well, that's uh, ex extremely kind of Yes, you. I know. But I see you're hard at work. Yes, indeed. But, I mean, what are the fellas doing just now? Aren't they shearing? Oh, yes, they're shearing all right. And they'll have to shear pretty hard before they'll get anything on the table today. <laughs> but I think they're wasting too much time <laughs> leathering in there. <laughs> uh, well, yes, they're shearing and this wool. Then we send the wool to the wool marketing board for which we get peanuts <laughs> and uh, then you go down to the shop and you buy it in Harris Tweed for which you pay a fortune. So have you always farmed in the island? No, oh, I was away in the mainland, I was down in Lanarkshire and I uh, farmed there for a few years then I moved to Helensburg and I was doing a bit of cattle dealing and Things like that. I mean, is, yes, this, is this a yeah. family business for you? Oh, or do yes, you employ oh, outside? Oh yes, oh, yes employ, employ. Uh, not not so many people for the for the sheep farming side. But you see, I've got another business over and above this. You see, I keep <laughs> I keep friendly with a few boys that will help me. You know, in the time I need. You see, not the way you've been shouting at. Me. Oh, what I know. You see, that's my way of of, of telling them that they're doing well. You see, <laughs> when I'm shouting. What about the other business then? It's a quarry, well, isn't it? I have a quarry, yes. And it's the only source of uh, a concrete sand in the Western Isles. And uh, anybody that's doing any work uh, with concrete, they have to use this particular sand. You used to be a coach hirer as well, didn't oh, you? Oh, well, Man of many parts, oh, DHM. My God, coach. That is now, when you start talking about coaches, you're going into something <laughs> different. Why? Yes. Well, yes, I was running a bus service. In fact, I was running the best, you know, the best bus service on the island, you know, not a service. And uh, again, I bought that seven years ago. It must have been a great year seven years ago because I bought a lot of things last year. <laughs> and this year, 1988, I'm trying to sell a lot. So that's how it is. You've missed your vacation. I missed the bus anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I always think that I'm very like that man that used to be on the television. The rise and fall of Reginald Perry. <laughs> <laughs> One day up, the next day down. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I didn't. I never went for a swim. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I never. I still kept on the on the dry land. I could spend the whole day listening to D H M. He's a great character. And they say he carries on a long tradition of storytelling in the Western Isles. <laughs>